Hello there, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the benefits for using smart objects in Photoshop. So to start with, I've got the header section of a fictional homepage on screen. We're going to just focus on the header section. And if I open the layers panel, we've got the nav at the top there. And we've got the content here in the middle of the page. And then we have a background, which is a solid fill with a color overlay, just so it looks gray. So what we're going to start with is add an image to this header section as a background. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the benefits of smart objects. And I'm also going to share with you my process and how I kind of work in Photoshop. So here's the image that's going to be the background for our header section. And I'm going to go to select and all. It's definitely worth learning these shortcuts as well. You can make this part of the process super, super quick. So that's Command or Control A, and it will select everything on the canvas. Then go to Edit, down to Copy. That's Command or Control C. Switch back over to your main PSD file. And then just click on the layer that you want your image to appear in front of. So if I select the background layer at the bottom, when I go up to Edit and down to Paste, that's Command or Control V, it will paste that image as layer one above that background. Now, if I compare at the moment, that image looks considerably bigger than my design. However, before I do anything, what I want to do is after pasting this in, right click that layer and then select convert to smart object. And you'll see this little smart object symbol appears. And I'm just going to double click this layer and call it image. Now what this does as a smart object, think of it as taking a snapshot of this image in its original size. For example, if you work in uh, Illustrator, InDesign, XD, if you drop in a high res image and then you scale it down and you scale it back up, it remembers the quality. Uh, it's the same in Photoshop. Whereas if I do the same again, so we'll copy that, we'll paste it in and I'll just scale it down. So this is a version that isn't a smart object. So we'll scale it down and then uh, I decide, or my client decides, oh actually, can we make that image bigger? Well, if I make that image bigger after scaling it down, you can see it's just an absolute blur of pixels and that's no good. So by making it a smart object, it takes a snapshot of it in its, uh, its highest res format. So if it's a really high res image, it will capture that with all its detail. And if I do, you can see it's massive if I zoom out. So I'll scale that down holding shift from one of the corners. So we'll scale it down really, really small. And then if I want to make it larger, you can see it doesn't pixelate. It remembers all that data within the image. In fact, what I can do is actually double click on the thumbnail here of the layer and it will load up this layer one in a separate .psb window. Now this is actually contained within the main file, so it's tutorial.psd. So what I can do is I can go in here and I can make some changes, some terrible changes, but I can make some changes. Nonetheless, I can fill up that layers panel with new layers. And as long as when I close this down, I select save, what it will do is it will take me back to the main document. And if I go back out and go to edit, free transform, that's command or control T, and then scale this down, you'll see that it's got those changes there. Now, obviously I don't want those big blue boxes there, it looks awful. So I can simply double click the thumbnail again. It loads up layer1.psb. I can make the changes. And then I can just click the X, select save, and voila, in the main document, it updates the changes within that image. So it gives you a lot more flexibility. So if a client says, can you make it smaller? Can you make it bigger? Can you change the color? You've got a lot more flexibility where you don't have to go and repaste it in because you made it too small in the first place. Something else you can also do is if I want to apply a blur effect to this, let's have a, a non, a non smart object and a smart object version. So by the way, if you want to uh, 
convert the smart object back into a raster graphic, you just right click it and select rasterize layer. Effectively, that means it will be back to as if we had never made it a smart object. So you can see that little icon disappears. So if I call this raster, and I'll just make a note with this one here, smart object, just so we don't get mixed up. Now this one here, what I can do is I can go up to filter down to blur and select Gaussian blur. And we can apply a really cool blur effect. Let's just go for 20. Click OK. Now it has actually applied that blur effect to that layer. So the only way to get rid of that is to go to edit and then select either undo Gaussian blur or step backwards until that blur effect is gone. However, with a smart object, I can go up to filter, down to blur, select Gaussian blur. We'll keep it at 20, click OK, and you can see it now lists it as a smart filter. Now this is something that is definitely in the more recent versions of Photoshop. And I can turn this on or off, and I can drag it to the bin down in the bottom right corner to delete that effect, or I can double click on the effect here, and I can go and make some changes, blur it even more, and click OK. So it gives me a lot more flexibility. Now, some of the downsides for using smart objects is that it will make your file sizes considerably larger and you will need a more powerful PC if you have lots and lots and lots in a large PSD file. Um, you know, I'm running a, a pretty good Mac setup, so it's not really an issue to me. Um, you know, in the past I have turned a, a full smart object ridden file that's about a gigabyte in size and by going through at the end of the process and just rasterizing all of those smart objects, once the design's been signed off, you can turn a gigabyte file into a hundred megabyte file. It's, it's that much of a difference. But when you're working with clients or stakeholders, you can keep everything as smart objects just while it's being worked on. It gives you that flexibility if you do need to change anything and then once they say, all good, signed off and approved, then you can just go through that PSD file and then just rasterize everything, kind of flatten bits down where you need to and it will just reduce the file size and you can then supply it to your client or the developer. You don't want to hand over a gigabyte file or multiple gigabyte files to a developer in the handover process because it will just be nightmarish for them and nightmarish for your client because they've got to download all that. And if they don't have a computer that is powerful enough there and they're gonna really struggle to open that file. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I will delete that blur effect so we can see this nice spacey background here. And I'm gonna go back to when it was huge. So I pasted it in, it was pretty massive. It's a very high res shot. Now you can just scale it down by using edit and free transform. However, if you want to scale into a certain space, if you have a long kind of page and you just have this header section you want to contain it within, just select the rectangle tool and we'll draw a rectangle by left clicking and dragging. Now I like to give these funky colors that just stand out because I'm just using this as a guide. So we'll just snap this to the size of our header image. So if you did have lots and lots of content, very long page down here, you can snap this in place just so that it covers the entire area where you want your image to appear. So we'll call this guide. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it underneath my image. And by holding down Command or Control over the layer thumbnail, you can see this little image appears. It's a little kind of dotted square box similar to the marquee tool over here. And if I left click on that thumbnail, the marching ants appear and it selects the area which this shape takes up. Now what I want to do is select my image, my smart object. And from the bottom of the layers panel, select add layer mask. And you'll see it adds a mask to that and we can now switch off the guide. We don't need this anymore. So that's great. Uh, however, if I do drag this around now with that layer selected, it moves it around. If I adjust the size, it scales it down and I don't want to do that. I want to adjust the crop, but keep it within this set header area. So all we need to do 
is simply click on this link, this little chain icon in between the layer and the layer mask. And now that it is unlinked, I can go to edit, free transform, and we'll zoom out quite a bit and just hold shift and scale down from the corner. And what it will do is it will now mask this image within this space. So if I go and increase the height of my canvas a little bit, pretend there's some more page down here. Let's just bring that down. You can see that as I move this around, it won't go below here. It won't go outside of this masked area. Let's go back a few steps. Now, another thing you can do with smart objects is you can add vectors from programs like Illustrator and you can add them as smart objects also just to have more flexibility. So if we switch over to Illustrator, I've got an icon design here. I'm just going to select it, go to edit, copy, switch back into Photoshop and I want this to appear above all of my other layers. So if I select the highest layer and go to edit and paste, you can paste it in as a variety of different shapes or options. I'm going to select smart object, click OK, and you can see that it, it, well, it comes in here so I can kind of adjust the size. And when I'm happy with the size and position, just press enter or double click on the shape to set it. And you'll see it then has that same vector smart object icon next to the thumbnail. So we can double cl click this and call it icon. And in Illustrator, it's this color. Now we can edit that. There's two ways we can do that. We can double click on the thumbnail. And what it will do is it will open that icon back up in Illustrator. And I can change the color. Let's go for yellow. And just go File, Save. And again, it will update that within the main document. So this Vector Smart Object 1 is contained within the PSD file. So even though it's loaded in Illustrator, if I close it down, it's still all contained within this icon, within this smart object in Photoshop. So you can edit it in its original program like Illustrator, or you can right click the layer, go to blending options and select color overlay. And then we can just pick a different color. I'm gonna go for white, click OK, click OK, and it will add that color overlay on top. So it will ignore whatever color it's set as in Illustrator because we've applied an effect that kind of trumps that within Photoshop. So we've got vector smart objects and we can link this again once we've finished. And we've then got an image as a smart object as well. And as I say, once you've finished your design, uh, it's all been approved and signed off. If your file size is huge, you can, you can leave the icons as are because icons are relatively small file sizes, but high-res imagery can, can stack up when there's lots of them on a big page. So you can just right-click that layer and go down to Rasterize Layer, and you'll see the Smart Object icon disappears, and the size of your file will decrease considerably. And there we go. That's a little bit about some of the benefits of Smart Objects in Photoshop. As always, guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care, and I'll see you next time.